Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this April the 7th special Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And we welcome you. We want to check this mic. Yeah, it's up and running good. This is April the 7th special Easter show and dealing with the absolute terribleness of what's going on in the Middle East and around the world. We're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to talk about the scripture, then we're going to introduce our guest. And if you'd like to call us during this time, all you got to do is pick up your phone and call me. I'm just using this phone today. That's 714-865-8132. And we'll put it on speakerphone and take your call. And the other numbers are the work? No, the other numbers are working, but i got to get them turned on. But I, And I'm running a little bit late tonight because I thought I had those on, but I didn't have those on. But I will have them on in just a minute. So hang with me. Okay. I got, I got You're yeah, going to talk today also about what happened in Syria and the Middle East. Yes, okay. And today, you know, the Coptic Orthodox Church, and um, they celebrate the final of the, um, the fasting. Yes. Because... Um, Orthodox Church fasting 55 days before the Easter. Mm, okay. Only eating vegetables and fruit. Yeah. No dairy product, no seafood, no milk, no juice. I'm sorry, no milk, no meat, no butter, um, no chicken, no turkey, no nada, you know? All right. Only well, for 55 days, yeah. Let me get us on the line, and then we'll continue to chat. That would be very important people to understand the other church, what they're Welcome. doing. This service is provided by Free Pass and Cup. Yeah. You enter 399430. If this is correct, press 1. To re You are the only participant in the conference. Now we're going to hear a little music, so hang on with us just for a minute. Is that just number 2? Uh, yeah, we'll get it. Stop the music, and the phone lines are open now. All you got to do is call. That speakerphone will pick it up, and you'll be able to talk to my guest, Nabil Bisada, and uh, yours truly, Wiley Drake. And we want to say happy pre-Easter, and we thank the Lord. Now, we are live on the air. We're in not Washington, but we're in our Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s. West Coast headquarters, and uh, Nabil Bisada is here today. What's the first thing we should do? The Proverbs? You have the Proverbs. All right. John 3.16. All right, let's do Proverbs. Proverbs 7, because today is the 7th. Yes. And the first five verses are, My son, and by the way, daughter, you have daughters, I have daughters. When it says my son, that means children. Children. As adults, men, women, boys and girls. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers like we wear rings. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And say to wisdom, you are my sister. And to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman and from the wayward woman with her seductive words. That is Proverbs 7 for the day. And uh, we thank the Lord. Now, the other scripture <coughs> is the one that I believe is the most important scripture in the Bible. <coughs> and that's John 3. 
3.16. John 3.16 says, God, not the Baptists, not the Catholics, not the Coptics, but God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we thank God for that. Now, Brother Nabil has pointed out to me one of the Psalms, and we read the Psalms every day as well. But Psalms 18 in the verse New six, International, yes. Psalms 18, verse 6, in the New International Version says this, In my distress, anybody out there distressed? Mm -hmm. We all get in distress. In my distress, David said, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. Are you in distress? Call God. I cried to my God for help, David said. From his temple, that is his church, his synagogue, his temple, he heard my voice and he heard my cry. And he came, that my cry came before him unto the ears of God. So, Psalm 18, 6. Read about it. Are you distressed? Are you dis disappointed? Do you have problems raising your kids? Do you have problems raising your wife? Raising your husband? <laughs> your kids have trouble raising you, your parents? If you're in distress, God says, David said, I call unto the Lord. And guess what? He will help us. Now, mm -hmm. we're calling unto the Lord today about a lot of things, but we also want to remind you that we need to call unto God for what's going on in Syria and in Russia. And Nabil, from your perspective as a former Muslim who went to prison, who was almost killed because you became a Christian, from your perspective, what do you think is happening in Syria? Really, first of all, I want to say everybody, you know, because it's coming Friday to be the Holy Friday. Amen. We want to be in church at that time. Maybe we'll be, we're going to be able maybe to do the show. But I'd like to say, you know, for everybody, you know, happy resurrection for Jesus Christ. Amen. And we celebrate the, um, the anniversary because Jesus Christ is always alive. Yes. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and every time. And forever. And we believe that Jesus Christ is arise and Jesus God and is the Son of God by the witness. Mm -hmm. The witness who saw Jesus Christ, those are the people who give us the belief in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who represents himself as a human. So God will give to Moses the Ten Commandments. Amen. He came down. Ladies, ladies, let me interrupt you just for a minute. I just got a uh, phone call, a message, a text from Mr. Alan Parker. He's the attorney that's helped us in many cases, and he's a great godly man. And his dear mother is in the hospital, mm. and uh, but she's doing some better. So we're praying for Alan Parker's mother, and we want to continue to do that. Now, let's go ahead with our program, though. Of course, we give our uh, uh, attorney... Mm. Alan Parker? Yes. All our prayer, you know, and our love, you know. Amen. And may God touch him and touch his mother. Amen. And everything will be well. You know, only have to have faith on Jesus Christ and he do the miracles. Amen. Praise God. Really, yesterday, it was amazing things happened in Syria. Suddenly, we found Bashar Assad, the president of Syria, is accused for something he didn't do it. Why? Before, first of all, I'm not from Syria, I'm from Egypt. I'm from the Copts, Orthodox, the Christian of Egypt. But I know from very friends in Syria, Christian, they have the own freedom to worship and to go to their own church and nobody can attack them or anyone can kidnap their own daughter or sister or wife to take them and convert to Islam that can happen in Egypt every single day by a dozen of girls from the Christian belief who get kidnapped in Egypt. Amen. So Bashar Assad, he's fighting 
against ISIS. He's fighting against all other Muslim terrorist group. And suddenly, America sent 59 missiles to hit Bashar Assad in his own home. Hmm. How many missiles? 59. 59 missiles. Yes, go and destroy the airport full. Hmm. Why? If you go back again, the prince of Saudi Arabia was here three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the prince of Saudi Arabia gave wrong information for our president. For that, Mr. Bannon, mm -hmm. he refused it and he resigned or mm -hmm. yes, he quit yes. or whatever, he got fired. Now, when we hit Bashar Assad, the man who is fighting the terrorists for us, for all the Western people, for all the West country. He's the only person now who fight against terrorists for, for many, many years. Amen. And who support terrorists, Saudi Arabia? Yeah, Saudi, yeah. Is supported by, who is supported by, by US. Saudi Arabia make 9-11, and team now refuse to reimburse the family who get killed on 9-11. Mm, mm, refuse. Mm. Till yeah. now, Saudi Arabia. What a shame, what a shame. The Muslim terrorist country yes. in the world yes. who support all terrorists or all religious because I don't say to Muslim terrorists, I say religious Muslim. Mm. Because when you, have, when you are a religious Muslim, you have to practice Islam as is. Mm. When you practice Islam as is, you must be same as ISIS mm -hmm. or Taliban yeah. or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram mm. or Hamas or Muslim yeah. Brotherhood or all the other Muslim organization around the world, mm. or like KCIA, we have it here, Yeah, Muslim Brotherhood. And just up the road a ways here, uh, not very many miles away, less than 25 miles away, at uh, San Bernardino, uh, the Islamic terrorist, his, the man and his wife had a job, they were employed, they were working in a school, and they went there and they killed 14 people just up the street here a little ways, just up the road. Yeah, you know, who's supporting what happened yesterday in Syria? Mm. All Muslim organizations. Yes. They yes. are dancing and chanting Allahu Akbar. Mm. Why? Because we give chance mm. for ISIS, we give chance for Boko Haram, we give chance for Hamas, we give chance for Muslim Brotherhood. Now, Qaeda. For Qaeda, for everybody. Yes, yes. To chanting now, Allahu Akbar, America work for us now. Mm. We just finished with Mr. Obama time, who supporting mm. the Muslim terrorists or Muslim religious. Now, I'm surprised that Mr. Trump today, he do it. Bashar Assad, and I'm not a Syrian person. I'm an American citizen by original from Egypt. Mm. I support Bashar Assad because he is the one who fighting terrorists and he is the one who kill the terrorists who attack his, his Christian Syrian people. In Syria, no one have the power and the, the authority of Bashar Assad to arrest any Christian in the street or to attack any Christian in his own church or in, a, in, a, in his own home. In Egypt, the president of Sisi was visiting the USA in a few days ago, a few days ago only, when they asked him about the Christian Egypt, he deceived them mm. and told them Egyptian people live all together, Muslim and Christian same way. <laughs> it's not true. Not true. At Absolutely. all. We have evidence that every day, Christian women get kidnapped and killed. Yes. Until. It's going on all the time. And ladies and gentlemen, Nabil Basada experienced that. It was some time ago, but he experienced that. And he knows what they will do and what they're doing. They're uh, raping and killing the women, and uh, it must be stopped. It must be stopped, plus the Egyptian men, or, uh, you know, we got a uh, certificate from university. He cannot have a job. Mm. It's finally. No any 
situation can Egyptian Christian have it in, in, in their own country, mm -hmm. the native people? In America, the native Americans, they have the right, don't pay tax. Mm. But in Egypt, we have pay, we pay tax double and double and double because of our belief as a Christian. Just because you're a Christian, you get taxed more and more and more. And to prove what President Sisi informed the White House and the representatives, the senators, not true, have an article by a Muslim guy called Mohammed the Suki. Mm, okay. He's a Muslim from Egyptian, say. And I can't read that but because it's in Arabic, but what does that say? It say that, uh, I read in Arabic or it says it also in English. Oh, okay. Al Masihuna fi Musr, Waka'ahum Shadid al Bu'z, Hum Yuhagaruna min Biladihim, Watuhrak Dor Ibadatihim, Wa Yuhasar Beutihim, Hamag Yutalibunuhum, Betaslim Ibnatuhum, Bedawa in Nahas Bahat Muslim. مسلمة أي ذل هذا تخيلوا أن بشرا يحاصر بيتك ويأخذ ابنتك ويقول لك إنسا لم تعد ابنتك وعن أي مواطنة تتحدث في أي بيت من عيلة يكتمت تبارك الدين أو كانت تسيط now you guys in English what a Muslim guy said in Egypt to say that all the media talking about Christian life in Egypt is not true I say that the Christian Egypt are living under mistress, distrust, mm. very shameful. They so, have to, the, so all the media is reporting that the Christians in Egypt are doing good. Good, yeah, they lie. They deceive. They deceiving the all the Western people because they don't understand Arabic. Yeah, they yeah. say that they got withdraw from their own country, their own city, from their own houses. They took their own money, mm. they, they burned their own church, mm. they surrounded their houses, mm. and some gangs mm. asked them to take their own daughter, the, the, the Christian daughter, mm. by under the authority that she converted to Islam. And it's not true. Mm. At all, it's not true. Because you must be, lose your mind to convert in Islam, when you are in Egypt, or Syria, or Saudi Arabia, or American, or English, or Germany, you must lose your mind mm. to go to the devilish religion mm -hmm. to convert to this devilish religion was already rejected by millions of Muslims. And the media is telling you that everything is going well, going great. This media, the Wiley Drake Show, Congressional Prayer Conference, is telling you from a former Muslim that it's not going okay. They're killing the people and they're raping and doing a lot of terrible things to them. They say that the Christian Egypt are living under submission, mm -hmm. you know, submit, you know. And he asked, and, and, and the, the Muslim guy, Mr. Muhammad the Suki, he's an honest person, but he's, he's, he's a Muslim, mm. you know. He put his religion aside, away. Mm. And he said that to, to all the people. You can imagine any one of you are the weavers who call now over than 700,000 viewers. In our show, yeah, over the seven hundred thousand viewers, anyone can imagine some gangs come to your house and take your daughter mm -hmm. or your wife, mm -hmm. and they tell you, "Sorry, forget that is your daughter. We're gonna take him to be a Muslim." Mm -hmm. What kind of freedom, of equality, is this according to Sharia? According to the Sharia and Islamic constitution in Egypt. Yeah, it's not happening. What's happening is murder and rape and all the bad things that are going on is what really is happening. This cannot be happen in Syria. No one Muslim in Syria under the authority of Bashar Assad can do this with any Christian. No one or any Jewish in Syria. Mm. No one can do that or any Buddhist that is freedom of religion in Syria, and now we try to bomb and kill Bashar Assad because he protects the minority. Because he, Bashar Assad, he's a, first of all, he's an optometrist and took her all education from England. Very educated, his wife, wonderful person, you know. All his own mistake that he protect and respect 
Christians and Jewish in his own country. He respects the Buddhist. He respects anyone don't believe in any other religion mm. and his ethics. Mm. Now we try to put him out. We need to support Bashar Assad because he's the only one who are try to save America from the terrorists. Mm. Well, and we certainly respect that in him and want to be supportive of him. Is there anyone else on the line with us at this time? No, we still have more minutes because um, okay. they start to call us about at 525, okay. you know. Okay, all right. Well, you know. if any of you are listening and you want to call, call 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND and join us. In the meantime, Nabil is going to share some more with us. You know, we have Maxim Water, the U.S. representative on the 43rd Congressional District. Mm -hmm. He said that the Sharia must be in America. What? What did you know, Miss Maxime Waters, about the Sharia? You or Mr. Uh, Care in Texas, Mr. Mm. I forget his name, Carol. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what do you know about the Sharia? What did you know? Did you know that the Sharia law put you as a woman under the shoes of any Muslim man. I, I got some abrasion about the, um, the Sharia law. Mm. If you, would you please can read it here? What is the yes. Sharia law in brief yes. time? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we, According to Sharia we, law. Do wanna, we do want to stay away from Sharia law in this country or any country. Theft, if you steal something, is punishable by amputation of the right hand. They cut their right hand off if they steal something. Do we have another caller? We'll finish, the finish oh, first. Okay, hang on. Do we have another caller? Yes. Go right Hello. ahead. Who is this? Uh, Dr. Nabil Assad. All right. Well, doctor, hang on with us just for a minute. We were just talking about, according to Sharia law, if you steal something, they cut your hand off. And if you criticize... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching uh, the program already on uh, the computer. Good. Uh, yeah, we're going to read the, the, the doctor while we're going to read on, on the two minutes, Dr. Assad. And, and, um, if, and yeah. if, if you criticize or deny any part of the Quran, that's punishable by death. Yes. If you even criticize it. Criticizing Muhammad, who was a pedophile, Criticizing uh -huh. Muhammad or denying that he is a prophet is punishable by death. Uh -huh. Criticizing or denying Allah is punishable by death. Allah is, of course, the, the moon, moon god. Yeah. A Muslim who becomes a non-Muslim, that's Nabil Basada. Dr. Nabil. Dr. Nabil is no longer a Muslim. But a Muslim who becomes a non-Muslim is punishable by death. A non-Muslim who leads a Muslim away from Islam, and that's certainly you, is punishable by death. A non-Muslim man who marries a Muslim woman can be punished by put, being put to death. A man, now this is Sharia, folks. A man can marry a, a baby, an yeah. infant girl, and consummate the marriage when she is nine years old. Mm -hmm. Girls' body part, called the clitoris, should be cut, according to Muhammad's words. Book, Book 41, Kitab Al-Adab, Hadith. 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 Five, two, five two five one. That is a part of the little girl's anatomy, and they cut it off. Yes. And uh, a woman can have one husband, who can have up to four wives, and Mohammed can have all he wants. He can have more. A man can beat his wife. For insubordination. Is that a religion of peace? <laughs> if your wife doesn't do what you tell her to do, you can beat her. That's not a religion of peace. 
A man can unilaterally divorce his wife. A woman needs her husband's consent to divorce. But a man can divorce his wife for whatever reason. A man uh, can do that, but a divorced wife loses custody of all children over six years of age when they get older. Testimonies of four male witnesses. Let's say it's in a court of law or something needs to be testified to. Four men witnesses are required to prove rape against a woman. So it has to have four uh, witnesses. A woman who's been raped cannot testify in court against those that raped her. A woman's testimony in court allowed in property cases carries one half the weight of a man's testimony. A female inherits half of what a male inherits, and that's in the Quran. A woman cannot drive a car as it leads to fitna, upheaval. A woman cannot speak alone to a man who is not her husband or a relative. Meat to eat must come from animals that have been sacrificed to Allah. Muslims should engage in taqiyah and lie to non-Muslims to advance Islam. The list goes on and on. Sharia law in the UK, that is London, Europe, and Saudi Arabia. And of course, as Brother Nabil pointed out, Maxine Waters is the U.S. representative for the 43rd District, Congressional District, and she believes Sharia law ought to be okay. Yeah, she understands nothing. Like anyone. Yeah, Dr. Nabil, welcome. How are you today? Good, thank you. So, talk with us, Dr. Nabil. What do you think what happened yesterday in Syria? In a brief, please. Uh, this is a big question. This is a have to answer this question. Put, we put our hope on Trump that he can support the minorities in the Middle East. Mm. Instead, he bombed ISIS yesterday. He's the man who uh, in a war with ISIS. And he been, uh, uh, I'm, I'm believing, I'm believing, because I, you know, I am uh, a, a specialist in Islamic history. Uh -huh. This country, uh, for 37 years, uh, uh, among Muslims, Trump has been set up by somebody who bombed this gas and he put it on the shoulder of Bashar al-Assad, which he did not do it at all. Mm. So... But uh, let me ask a question, please. When you talk about Bashar Assad, because but you, you are not Syrian, you are Egyptian, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about Bashar Assad. I'm not supporting Bashar Assad. But Trump said in his campaign, we have nothing to do with Bashar Assad if he is in power or not. Now, he is a, a liar. Trump is a liar or what? Or deceiver. Uh, it, it, it's one of these. Either he is a deceiver, he deceives the American people, so he is a liar, he does something in the campaign, now he does something else, or something else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 what I see in the news, that Trump is, is campaigning with, or do a like uh, cooperation, or do a, a like uh, uh, allies with Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia. Egyptian people, 95% from the Muslim people in Egypt hate America and the American. And uh, 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 it's each word in the white boy. And now, I'm let, leaving. Let me, let me stop you. Let me stop you there just for a minute. Now, you said 95% what? Of the Muslims in Egypt? Muslim people in Egypt. The Muslims. Clearly America and the Americans, and they pray in, in, in a hornet in the 
Speaker, every, yeah. uh, every uh, Friday, and curse America and the Americans. And so and they, uh, they keep saying, uh, we, we, we hope uh, that, that America be destroyed, we hope the White House become the Black House, we have something mm. like that, we Muslim house. coming from the Sharia law, mm. hatred anyone who's not, uh, who's not uh, Muslim. So uh, 95 percent. Arabia, Excuse me, doctor. No, that's okay. Percent of people eating American company instead. Okay, so how you're come? you're but saying that how come Trump? Yes. Uh, said something uh, during the campaign to the people. Right now he's doing something else. Mm. He didn't mention Muslim as a religion. Mm. The only good thing he did. Gone. Uh, if he get involved with the devil or Satan and learn that do the Satan is allies with him, the another Satan will never win. He mm. will never ever win. Mm. Uh, back to Bashar al-Assad. Bashar al-Assad is the only leader in the Middle East, already Christian. Mm. Back to uh, the, 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 the monastery of Nam. In, in, in Wadi Ba'ad, back uh, two, three years ago, in Abu Bakr al uh, uh kidnapped the whole mom. Well, well, excuse me, excuse me, Dr. Nabi. Abu Bakr yes. the, the leader of ISIS. Yes. Okay. The leader of, of ISIS. Prison in Syria. The leader of he ISIS died. was support before Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And, 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 and doctor, and, uh, you're, you're uh, saying... You're saying that 95% of the people of the Muslims, hate of the Muslims. Of the Muslims hate America. And they said America too. Of the Egyptian Muslims. Hmm. And I can prove this easy and simple. No, excuse me. And they also the Muslim who live in America hate America also. Yeah. That, that's right, uh, yes, but they use the Takiya in the United States. Oh, Takiya, that they mean, use the Takiya in the United States. Yeah, Takiya, that mean, Takiya, that mean, they, they can lie for their own benefit. Yeah. So if yes, they if they live in America, they can say, "Oh no, we love America," but they yes. lie. They lie hundred percent. How? how this is something I don't have. Mm. There is two words that never found in Quran. Mm. Okay. What is that? Two words that never found in the Quran, and I I I. again? Love and peace. Peace and love. Okay, so love and peace is not there. Not there at all. At all. And by the way, it says it has 35,700 words. Hello? Yes, we are on the other hand. Doctor, okay. doctor, let us ask you a question. I'm an American, of course, and I'm a Christian, and I know a little bit about the terrorism of the Islamic religion, but what should we, all of us, Nabil Basada and you and others, what should we do to combat, if you will, uh, this hatred of Americans? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And forward and empower, and we have to admit 
that Islam is not a religion and Muhammad is not a prophet. Yes. This is the bottom line. Because no, when I say no, uh, Christian is a religion, of course, and Islam is a religion, now I'm made even mm. with Satan. And this is the Lord is very upset. That's why we get hurricanes. That's why we get tornadoes. Why we get a lot of uh, natural crisis. Because mm -hmm. we the Lord down. We put up, up, we put him down because we uh, 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 we make it even. Make it the same. Mm -hmm. Not right. Not the, 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 the way that the Lord sent us. We have to Doctor, let me let, let me let me ask you a question, Doctor. Go ahead. Uh, you at one time were a Muslim, right? Yes. And but then and then you converted and became a Christian. You followed Jesus. Yes. What happened to you as a result of that? I was in revenge and I now in peace. Mm. Amen. Yes. Another line. Amen. Do we have another caller on the line with us? I yeah. Know. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Mina Zohair from Florida. Well, God bless you from Florida, and we thank you for that. I have a daughter that lives in Florida, and we welcome you on the Congressional Prayer Conference line. Tell us a little bit, were you Muslim at one time? Yes, I was uh, born Muslim in Egypt, and uh, Nabil is uh, a good friend of mine. Yeah, we yeah. both were in prison during more or less the same period of time in the 1980s, mm. before uh, we came and uh, we met each other in uh, Los Angeles in 1991. Mm. Okay. And uh, both of us actually suffered much for our cause, the cause, of course, of Christ mm. and the cause of Egypt as compatriots in Amen. the same country. And uh, I know that today we were discussing the Middle East. Yes. And uh, the Middle East has well be as it has been all the time, a place of conflict, violence, mm. hatred, yes. war. I think it will last until the coming of our Lord mm. in the end of the days to proclaim his kingdom in mm. glory. Mm -hmm. And it is really painful to see someone who is fighting our enemy, uh, the Luciferian Muslims of the Middle East, mm. and stabbing them in the back. Mm. As we are speaking about what is happening in Syria these days. And it is not really about a person. It is not about Bashar al-Assad. Mm. Bashar al-Assad does not represent himself. He represents a whole uh, bunch of people and forces, the forces, I would say, of our own right, that they're facing this kind of Luciferian uh, satanic presence in the Middle East. Yes. Well, my brother, <laughs> what... What should we do, how should we pray, and what can we do to help those that are under this Luciferian uh, regime? Well, 
telling the truth mm. is actually the most potent uh, weapon that we can have. Amen. Don't really have to fight with anything apart from truth. I remember when I was in Egypt, when I was in prison, there were many people like me. I know that personally. I saw it whether I was in prison or outside the prison. Mm. Speak about uh, in particular Egyptian Muslims who are coercive. I know that many people don't really understand that we are all coercive in Egypt as Muslims mm. to be Muslims. I remember I spent uh, all these kinds of months in solitary confinement and isolation to be coercive back to be Muslim. But obviously, if you know the truth, you really have to carry it. Nobody can be. You live only one time. You have to live with yourself, basically. Well, you know, and Jesus you said, Jesus, Jesus said, you and I shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 And amen. And the truth is the most potent weapon that we can actually proclaim. It is actually the the God himself, the Lord himself, this is actually the light that shed its presence on the whole world and dissipates the darkness. And Amen. whenever we are doing that, we bring the whole humanity to him. Amen. Himself. Another call? All right, hang on just a minute. We have another caller on the line. Caller, if you're there, you're welcome to identify yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Wiley, and uh, I called in because I was wondering if the Muslim converted to Christ, Brother Akula, is uh, speaking again on a Friday mm -hmm. afternoon. Is he mm -hmm. there? Yeah, yeah no, well, Nakula is not here today, but Nabil is. He's on the air with us right now. Okay, I just have a question when you guys get a chance. Okay, well, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, for the third or fourth time that I've called in on Fridays, I always ask, I have been asking the same question, and I'm still waiting for a clear answer. The question is, from a converted Muslim's point of view that is thoroughly familiar with the Muslim culture, the question is, is the reason that the Muslims do not murder me, Reuben Israel, the preacher that uh, has called Muhammad a pedophile, Jet Smock, who preaches, you, Wiley, and the Christians that are evangelicals, is the reason they don't, because when, and now this is where they get confused, I don't believe Muhammad went up into the heavens and talk to God when he got called up there. But according to his, my understanding of the Muslim people, they say that Muhammad saw Abraham, Moses, Elijah, mm. and Jesus Christ. My question is, according to his understanding, is that what they believe? Do they believe that Muhammad saw Jesus Christ is one of the top three guys in the Muslim religion. Okay, Dr. Mina, you want to answer or I answer? Yeah, I, I can answer it. Okay, it's go. The whole uh, thing about uh, Muhammad going up to heaven and uh, being uh, leading prayer in Jerusalem temple, uh, assumingly it is the heavenly Jerusalem temple because that, uh, the heavenly Jerusalem at that time was destroyed. He was... Uh, Speaking about the whole uh, bunch of prophets, and he was claiming to himself a status above everybody else because he was leading them in prayer. And that actually brings the whole idea of Muhammad. Muhammad was trying to persuade his followers as well as other Christians and Jews in Arabia at the time that he is a real prophet. He was claiming to himself that kind of status as mm. uh, the ultimate prophet or whatever it is. And obviously it is not true. He was making it up, basically. Like the I understand Quran. that. Don't go over what we already know. Don't go over what we already know. Try
try to understand the question I'm asking you. Do the Muslims resist murdering Christians, especially Christian preachers and guys like you, because they do have some respect for the followers of Jesus Christ because Muhammad, according to his story, which I don't believe, but according to his story, he says that Jesus was up there with the big boys. He was one of the three big shots up in heaven. What, what is that, what true or not what the Muslims believe? Do they believe that? Yeah, the truth is that Muhammad, in the Quran itself, he proclaimed that the, the people of the book, means mainly Christians and Jews, are under protected status. In Arabic, it is Zimni. That they are okay. supposed to be obligated to pay jizya or kufax or mm. protection, that they are protected from harm from the Muslims in that sense. Other non-people of the book means everybody else, apart from Jews and Christians, are not protected by Muslims. That will include the Buddhists or whoever might be. And they are actually not or will not be considered as alive to be protected. It means they can be killed or enslaved. Period. Okay. Now, let me, let, me, let me stop you right there and... Uh, uh, Nabil, of course, is here, and uh, I want him to give us uh, anything he would like to say in reference to that. I think, if I understand Bobby's question is, is that do we have a certain amount of protection because we're Christian in the Muslim religion? And I believe what you're saying is that, yes, there is some, even though not very much. But, uh, Brother Nabil, what did you have at that point? Yeah, they have protection for the Christian, but under condition. Ah, uh, yeah. To f first of all, you have to pay more taxes, like Jesus, like uh, Mother Mina said. Mm. Second, we have no right to build any new church as a Christian or temple as a Jewish. Mm. No more new. No more. Third, when you see a Muslim walking in the street, you have to cross the street to the other side. Mm. Num and, and other point, a Muslim have the right to come to your house and stay for three days for free, use your food, your bedroom, you know, and no problem that how to take your wife and sleep with her. Yeah. Under this condition, Muslims have the right. When they got the power according to the Sharia law, yes, they protect you. Because Muslims' religion is a fake religion, like you see, Mr. Bob, is true. Second, like we talked with Dr. Wiley before the show, our faith as a Christian didn't come because Jesus Christ, I said I'm a son of God, or I do miracle, no. The witness we saw Jesus Christ make miracles, mm. raise death, yes, yes. heal blind, give a sight for, for blind, mm -hmm. heal, paralyze it. Witness, we saw that, let me believe on Jesus Christ. But the problem with the Muslims, they said Muhammad say, but no witness. The only witness, the Muslim, the habit is the Hadith. Mm. And the Hadith now, majority of Muslims try to reject it because it is very long chain. Mm. One of the Muslims, I have it, I, I met him on a prison. Dr. Mina know him. Yohanna Bshu Abdul Messiah Yahya Mursa Abdul Fattah, you know him, Dr. Mina, correct? Yes, of course, I know him. And I ask him, why you convert to Christianity? He told me I was making PhD in Islam religion. Hmm. I went to Cairo University, to the library, to prepare my PhD. I brought all the books of the Hadith, which complete of the Quran, because according to Islam religion, Muslims, cannot be a true Muslim and he believe in two books, hmm. the Quran and the Hadith. He found something on the Hadith, make description of his own privacy sexual part. His two pounds and four fingers and two. When I asked him what means that, I told him the two pounds, I know it, 
I told me she brain was fit with keratin. I told him, what is the fit? He told me these four mm. fingers and the keratin, he told me these two. And he told me when I saw that, is that a possibility a prophet of Islam can wrote about him, description, his sexual privacy. I left Islam and I said to God, you God, Allah, if it's true that Muhammad is your last prophet, let me tell you something. You make a bad choice for a bad <laughs> man, a yes, bad person. Yes, amen. You want to say? This is Islam wedding. Like Dr. Mina say, Muslim take Islam by inheritance. Mm. They don't want to think. Because the only things Muslim do it about Islam is to attack Christians. Mm. I bet you, in this show, and have Dr. Mina and other line, let any Muslim call me we have Dr. Mina or Dr. Nabil Asad too in yeah. other line and tell us what is Islam or why he believes in Islam or give me any call for any American person or woman or man or European convert to Islam or Egyptian or um, any kind from any religion convert to Islam and tell me why he convert. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why this program is on the air, we have some 600,000 700. subscribers, over 700,000 now, I understand, subscribers that listen to this, and we're saying we will let anybody come on this program. Yeah, call me. Call, call me if you convert to Islam. Like you say, Miss Waters, you want, you want Sharia? Yeah. Call me and tell me what it is good, good in Sharia. Yeah. Mr. Carroll. If you like Islam, convert to Islam, become a member on CARE, C-A-I-R, call me and tell me what is good in Islam and Sharia. Any Muslim live in America, USA, or in Europe, or in Egypt, or Saudi Arabia, tell me what is good in Islam and prove to me that the books of the Quran is the original book that you believe on. No one can prove that it is the Quran, the Muslim have it now, is the exact book, the original book. No one, no one can prove this. Yeah, and, and so, folks, we're wide open here. In fact, we're wide open not only for this dealing with this whole bad situation of the Islamic religion, but we're dealing with uh, positive things as well. And we have a great Easter cantata coming up here on Sunday. And if any of you out there listening would like to <coughs> get a ticket, this thing is... Uh, a 500-member choir and orchestra. It's down in Long Beach, and it's called the Easter Cantata. And if you'd like to go to that, you see me, you call me, and let me know you'd like to go. I can't get you there, but if you can get there, it's down on Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach, California, and it's a great Easter Cantata. Uh, you could go there and represent this show at the uh, VIP reception at five o'clock and then go to the cantata at seven and if you'd like to do that you call me and i'll get you a vip badge to attend that and you can attend the easter cantata which is very christian and very anti-muslim and we would encourage you to do that my phone number is 714-865-8132 now ladies and gentlemen we only have about seven or eight minutes Okay, I'm going to answer also for Dr. Bob again another question. Okay, another go, question. go ahead. When Muhammad came in other, the other day, day after, and told him, I met with Jesus and Abraham and Moses, people don't believe him. They, they said on the Hadith, let go and ask his wife, the, his youngest wife, lovely wife, Aisha, the wife that he took it, his wife, when he, 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 um, he go engage her when she was six years old, and the Hadith said that, you know, he put his privacy between her legs like oral sex. Muslim, no, the American people don't, don't know that. When she was six years old? Yes. He took her, and um, according to the book of the Hadith and the Bukhari, he put his own privacy, sexual privacy, between her legs because she was too young to make penetration. But when she came at nine years old, he tried to use, you know, her as a, a normal woman. He asked her. And she was almost 13 years old, 14 years old. And the Muhammad true, 
He went, uh, left last night, he left. He went to Jerusalem and he met with Jesus on uh, on Allah and all these people. So no, all night, Muhammad was sleeping, sleeping next to me. That book, the Hadith, <laughs> not, no, not my word. I've never been there. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's what happened. He, Muhammad said he went to Jerusalem, but his his he fly pre pre teenage wife said no. He didn't go anywhere. He was in the bed all night. Yeah, and I, I never left. Well, his spirit kind of guy. I'd easily uh, <laughs> uh, understood. Uh, his spirit went. His body was there. That don't really mean anything. Another two questions. All right. Are, are you talking about the Easter, the meeting? And Long Beach is on a week from this Sunday on Easter Sunday, Wiley? It's on Easter Sunday the 16th. And if you'd like to go, call me later and let me know. The, um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the cantata is at 7, but the VIP meeting that you could represent this show and this church and represent Christians, the VIP meeting is at 5 o'clock. So you got to call me, though, to get your badge and all that kind of stuff. But then you stay there for the 7 o'clock uh, cantata. Big, super, great cantata. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, depicting all of the Easter story. And a great, great orchestra of several hundred singers and several hundred instrumentalists. Great, big event. And if you want to go... Call me and we'll be glad to get you signed up for that. Now, uh, Thank you. what's the what's second question, Bob? Yeah, other question is in the Muslim religion, it's okay for Muhammad and arranged marriages with young girls uh, because at least it's with a man and a woman. But in the Muslim religion, if you are a man with another man, like in the homosexuals, then they properly put you to death. Is that the right understanding? Yes, correct. In, in earth, yes. But in heaven, Islam allowed homosexual. According to, to the book. Of the, yes. According to their imagination, man can have 72 women, engage her every day, and every woman he sleep with her, she become again virgin. And, and, and the verse of the Quran say that, Huriyat wa nisa wa awlad mukhalladun. Auradun Mukhaladun, that means the boy you're gonna have a sleep with him, he never grew up. He's still boy for twelve between twelve and thirteen years old. He never well, grew up. Yes, it's in the Quran in Arabic. You can be a homo in heaven, is that right? Yes. Islam allowed. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> I know that's it's a lie of the devil. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's why they say it's so demonic. And so Luciferian, our other friends mentioned because that. Because a, a very important point, I've people. I've never heard that before. You're the only guy that ever told me that. I've never heard that before. Yeah, we hear on the show to tell you in, for everybody l l new things. The truth and the new things. Now, we only have about three minutes left. Okay, let me tell you something very important. Okay, go The ahead. Quran. American only people will say Holy Quran. But if they open the Quran, the book, the translation, he say, Nobel. Quran, the translation of the meaning, not of the word. Mm. Is that correct, Dr. Mina? Well, I did not have the chance to read the translation, but I No, I, I do have. I have one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you read the Quran itself in the original language, you know and you will see that it is all mixed up and uh, what you can take connected is... Salad. Yes, yes. yes. salad. Yeah. It's salad. It's like a mixed salad. He mixed said. salad. Yeah, Tomato, yeah. cucumber, uh, bell flour, uh, <laughs> corn flour, uh, right. now, parsley, uh, lettuce, uh, anything. Salad. Okay, now let me, let me stop just a minute and regain control here. We only have about two and a half minutes. I want to give anybody uh, else that two called seconds. in on the line to say anything you'd like to say to close out. Uh, hold on a minute, Bobby. Let the other men do that. But... Uh, if you have any other comments, fellas, take a couple of minutes each. In one minute, yeah. Dr. Mina? Yeah, I actually thank God for both you, Dr. Wiley, and Brother Nadir, for all the service and uh, the prayer and uh, the work that you are doing online. This is a really a great service Amen. for our Lord and His glory. Thank you. Oh,
also, <laughs> also Dr. Mina, really, your, your partner are uh, every show, you know, and every Friday, whenever we are here, me or Dr. Wiley, you know, is very good, appreciated, really, by the Lord also. And by the way, Nabil comes in here every Friday, and uh, if you'd like to come join him, if you're anywhere near Hollywood or or anywhere near Buena Park, Paul. where we're at, we're near Knott's Berry Farm, Disneyland, if you'd like to come in, we've got more chairs. You're welcome to come into the studio and be with us or in or the or studio. Or call. Or call on this phone number and uh, be a part of it. So also, Dr. B Mr. Bob, I have any, any comment in a few seconds? Bob? What? Do you have any comment to say in the end of the show, before the Easter? You have any no, comment? God bless you. We love you guys. God bless you. I, I admit I don't fully understand everything that's being said, but I'm trying to. We love you. Thank you for expressing your points of view. Thank you very much, and God All bless right. you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one minute. I want to give that to Nabil. Go ahead. Yes, well, first of all, I want to, to say Dr. Wiley, happy resurrection, Dr. Wiley, and for, for our viewers. And I hope, you know, in the, fut in the future, we're going to offer them million on viewers. Yes. And because we say the truth and only the truth, and we don't have nothing, because like we say in Arabic language, you know, when you talk about religion, mm. we have nothing to hide it, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, true is true. All right. True is true. Jesus mm. said truth is truth. You know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. And we're going to... Uh, and Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you. And, of course, John 3, loves 6. Loves you, too. Amen. Amen. And we love Muslim also. We love Muslim people. Amen. We, love, we, all, we Amen. invite them to know the, the truth of God, the truth of Jesus Christ. God, God said God so loved the world, the whole world. Yeah. And we're going to go now because it's 6 o'clock. We're going to hang the phones up. Anybody want to go to the cantata, please call me. We'll be glad to get you booked in there. Yeah. Good night. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. Okay, we gotta turn that off. Then we gotta turn this off. And then I gotta go turn the camera off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless and thank you. you.